Coming up on today's message with Pastor John. Do the work and know that God is with us and know that the latter days will be better than our past days. Uh, God's, God's, God, y- 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 your problems are not greater than God's prophecy. The devil's no is not going to outweigh God's yes. Your future is determined because God has something in store for you. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it entered into the hearts of man what God has in store for you. If we are willing to take courage and do the work and understand that the Lord is with us, our latter days will be better than our past days. Amen. Let's get into the word. Uh, Today's message is going to come from the book of Haggai. I'm going to start in the first chapter with the B clause of verse 15 and go all the way through chapter 2, verse 9. Again, that is Haggai, located in the back of the Old Testament, about two to three books from the start of the New Testament. Uh, Verse 115 through chapter 2, verse 9. Hear ye the word of the Lord. I'm reading from the New International Version today. Let's see what it has to say, amen. In the second year of King Darius, on the 21st day of the seventh month, the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai. Speak to Zerubbabel, the son of Shethiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, son of Josadak, the high priest, and to the remnant of the people, ask them, who of you is left who saw this house in its former glory? How does it look to you now? Does it not seem to you like nothing? But now be strong, Zerubbabel, declares the Lord. Be strong, Joshua, son of Josadak. The high priest, be strong, all you people of the land, declares the Lord, and work, for I am with you, declares the Lord Almighty. This is what I covenant with you when you came out of Egypt, and my spirit remains among you. Do not fear. This is what the Lord Almighty says. In a little while, I will once more shake the heavens and the earth the sea and the dry land. I will shake all the nations and what is desired by all nations will come. And I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord Almighty. The silver is mine, the gold is mine, declares the Lord Almighty. The glory of this present house will be greater than the glory of the former house, says the Lord Almighty. And in this place, I will grant peace, declares the Lord Almighty. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Pray with me, please. O Lord, our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. You are the one who was and is and is to come, and there is none like you. Lord God, we thank you for this opportunity to gather once again in your name, to Partake in your word, Lord God. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight so that we can do, think, and act according to your will. It is in your son's precious, perfect, powerful name, Jesus the Christ, I pray. Amen. Uh, For the time that we get to spend together today, I'd like to talk about how your ladder will be greater. Your ladder will be greater. Uh, Now and then, I'll go through my yearbooks in school, I'll get on my Instagram and my Facebook pages and I'll go through the memories function and I'll, I'll look at some of those old pictures just to see what was. It, it, it makes me feel good inside sometimes and I want to remember that happy time and feel that way again. But I know that in the past, while there were some good times, there were also some not so great times. And those not-so-great times taught me some valuable lessons that I probably would not have learned 
had everything been great all the time. So when I look at where I am now, I know that my present is much better than my past and that my future is going to be way better than my situation is right now. And I'm pretty sure I'm not the only person that thinks that. I'm pretty sure we all have a testimony that says, if I look back over my life and I see what the Lord has brought me through, uh, or if it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? And, and that is a situation that is going on right now in the text in the book of Haggai. Uh, these people are, are major characters in, in the history of the temple. Uh, uh, Joshua, Zerubbabel, and Haggai. Uh, Joshua being the high priest and Zerubbabel being the king and Haggai being the scribe or the prophet, if you will. You see, the temple had been destroyed. Uh, when we look at uh, the story of 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, and we look at Isaiah and some of those other uh, passages, uh, of those books of the Bible, you learn that the people did good and got good, but then they did bad and got bad. And, and, and the people of God were conquered, they were captured, and enslaved. And the people of God had been in captivity for a while, but now by the time we get to Haggai, it is time for the people of God to go home. And when they get home, Haggai uh, wants them to rebuild the temple of God. The book of Haggai is not very long. You can read it in a sitting real quick. It's only a couple of chapters, but they're powerful uh, chapters. And, the, and the, the man's name is based off of uh, taking a pilgrimage or a journey. Uh, and, and he says, we need to go back home and we need to rebuild. We had something that was good and we need to get back into it right now. Uh, but he, 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 some people don't think it's the right time. When they, when they have that. And so uh, chapter one, uh, Haggai starts off addressing an argument with some people uh, because they don't think it's the right time to rebuild the temple. Uh, they want to put it off for some unknown reason. And, 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 and Haggai says, I, I hear your excuses and I will raise you uh, that it will never be enough. I, I, I've dealt with some people like that, uh, some people who don't want to make decisions or don't want to act on the decisions that were being made, and, and they want to, when you're in the meeting, they're always the first one to want to refer it to another committee. We can't solve that right now, so let's just kick that can down the road so it'll be somebody else's problem. People who don't want to play or sing a certain song because they want it to be just perfect and they spend all this time pretending like they want it to be perfect so it never gets dumb. People who claim to be worried about doing something right and because they want to do it right, they end up not doing it at all. All. They pretend to want to pursue perfection, but their pursuit of perfection prevents them from taking any action. And so Haggai says, enough is enough. Y'all have been putting off trying to rebuild this church, trying to rebuild this temple, trying to make things better than they are. We need to get to work. Uh, he says in verses 5 and 6 in chapter 1, he says, now this is what the Lord Almighty says. Give careful thought to your ways. You have planted much, but harvested little. You eat, but never have enough. You drink, but never have your fill. You put on clothes, but you are not worn. You earn wages, but only put them in a purse with holes in it. You are planning and doing a whole bunch, but it's never enough. And we act like it's because now is not the time or now we need to do just a little more planning or I have a few more questions I want to ask about this before we get started. And it piles up and piles up and piles up and nothing ever gets done. Uh, 
How many businesses, how many business plans, business ideas are sitting in somebody's head because they haven't taken action? Uh, because they're waiting for the right time. How many goals haven't been accomplished because they're waiting on the right time? How many conversations do we miss out on because we are waiting for a better time to have that conversation? Motivational speaker Les Brown says that the graveyard is the richest place on earth because here is where you will find all the hopes and dreams that were never fulfilled the books that were never written, the songs that were never sung, the inventions that were never shared, the cures that were never discovered, all because somebody was too afraid to take the first step, keep with the problem, or be determined to carry out their dream. Haggai is trying to avoid that when he says, let's come on and let's build this temple. And you know, the other thing that prevented the people from rebuilding the temple was nostalgia. They remembered how the old temple was that King Solomon built. And because the new temple didn't look like the old temple yet, the people did not want to get involved. Uh, Haggai wasn't the first one, the first prophet to say, Let's rebuild the temple. He wasn't the first king that tried to get the temple rebuilt. He wasn't the first person that happened. Uh, by the time Haggai said what God told him to say, they had already been trying to rebuild the temple for 18 years. They had only poured the foundation, but not much else. And the people caught up in perfection, and the other people in love with the past kept the church from getting back on its feet in the present. Did you know that religious institutions and industries in America contribute about $1.2 trillion a year to the U.S. economy and society? Uh, that's not just churches, though. That includes church-run hospitals and church-related colleges and other institutions birthed by the churches and the religious groups. It also includes churches, but a lot of them are closing their doors. And, and, and we have these wonderful institutions that have been birthed out of the church. However, we are not putting out organizations the way we used to. We are riding on the backs of what we used to do. We have gotten caught up in the things we used to do and have felt like that is enough. And those members look back at what happened in 1940, 50, and 60 years ago. Uh, 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 uh. But as they look back to the 20s, the average worship attendance starts to go into the 20s. Uh, and so the older members look back to the time when the church was in its heyday and the building was in miraculous shape and the pews were full and the building buzzed with activity. But we don't do anything to bring that back. We just remember what happened there. And so Haggai says it's time to get back to helping the church. And you know how he knows it's time? You know how he knows it's time? Uh, he says in this book, uh, uh, <laughs> he looks at everybody's homes. You see, uh, this is during the time of what they call the Feast of Booths. And, and, and the people during the Feast of Booths remember the times where they didn't have a place to stay. And, and, and so they won't stay inside their houses during that time. They'll put up tents and booths on the outside of the house and live in those tents, kind of like a camp or, 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 or uh, like, a, like a camping or an RV situation. And, and Haggai looks around and says, man, y'all got, got some really nice houses. <laughs> and not only do you have really nice houses, 
you've got some really nice camping setups going on here. Some of your camping setups are better than your house. Your, your, your vacation home is better than something that other people live in. The number of cars you have in the driveway is better than other people who are taking uh, less forms of transportation. You've got plenty and then some, and you're willing to put all you want into all of those things, but not into the church. So y'all got time, I see, for these things, but not for God. And, and this is not just about money. Yes, we want to know where you spend your treasure, but we also want to know where you're spending your time and your talent. Why are there so many things that compete for your time against the church? Haggai says that your ladder will be greater. What you remembered in the past, what's going on now is going to be way better than what you remembered in the past. The people have a job to do, Haggai says, and the time to get started on it is not when the time is right, because the time is right now. Not when we need to remember about what we used to do. We need to start doing some things now. Take courage, he says. Over and over again, the Bible says, fear not. And, and Haggai is telling us we don't have to be afraid of the immense task in front of us. Uh, take courage because you have the most incredible support system you could ever have backing you up. Uh, some translations say glory. Some translations say splendor. But he says that the splendor of the, 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 this house will be better than the splendor of the former house. Uh, that word in the Hebrew is kabod. It means glory. It means honor. It means means wealth. It literally means weight. So when God shows up, he's going to throw his weight around. And this is the best VIP pass you could ever have. This is the best lanyard you could put on to get on these situations. This is the best thing that you can have to make your situation better. Take courage. Take courage and work. He says to do some work. I, I don't know any situation or anything that's accomplished worthwhile that is not accomplished without some hard work. I don't know anything worthwhile to do. Yes, it's going to be hard to rebuild the temple. Yes, it's going to be hard to rebuild the church. Yes, it's going to be hard to turn things around. But if it was easy everybody would do it. So we need to take that courage and we need to be willing to do the work. We need to be able to do the work to get these things done. And we need to be able to do the work because God is with us. He'll never leave us nor forsake us. Uh, the Bible says, I am persuaded that neither death nor light, nor height nor death, death nor life, nor things present, nor things to come. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Yeah. He loves us. We have the best person around to back us up. So we can take courage and do the work and know that God is with us and know that the latter days will be better than our past days. Uh, God's, God's, God, you, you, your problems are not greater than God's prophecy. The devil's no is not going to outweigh God's yes. Your future is determined because God has something in store for you. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it entered into the hearts of man what God has in store for you. If we are willing to take courage and do the work and understand that the Lord is with us, our latter days will be better than our past days. We just have to be willing to step into it and do it. Just like Haggai told these people in the Bible when they were trying to rebuild the church. 
is the same thing that applies to us now. Because the same God that took them out of Egypt is the same God that took them out of Babylon. And it's the same God that's going to help them rebuild the temple. And that's the same God that was there for our mothers and our mothers' mothers and our mothers' 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 mothers. The same God that was there for us when we didn't even know the language. The same God that protects us from danger seen and unseen. The same God that is there. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver us from them. That same God that did it then is the same God that can help us now. And he's the one that will make sure our latter will be better than our former days. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the doors of the church are open and we invite you to come. Pray with me, please. Oh, Lord, our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, your name is great and greatly to be praised. We thank you for this opportunity to gather in your word, and we ask that this be a seed that is planted in good soil and produces a great harvest for the kingdom of God. Lord God, let your Holy Spirit do his holy work in your holy people for your holy kingdom. Let this be a message that is, is planted and produces a harvest 30, 60, 100 fold. That someone who doesn't know Christ as their Savior will want to get to know him. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to connect with me on social media. Pastor Johnny Simpson Jr. on Facebook at Pastor J. Simp Jr. on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks again for watching and God bless.